Um, for those of you that haven't met me yet, my name is Courtney Zamunski and I'm the Associate Administrator here at Lancaster. And today we're going to be covering teamwork. So first to get started, we are going to pass around this ball, not to everyone, but to about five different people. There are some fun little questions on here. So when you catch it, answer the question that's closest to your right thumb. Ready? Pick it up, somebody. Right thumb. Right thumb. What characteristics do you most value in your coworkers? Um, honesty. Honesty. Um, yeah. Awesome. Pass it on to someone else without hitting the sprinkler. <laughs> Bad attendance? <laughs> yes. Okay, pass it on. I just gave myself a Jeez. little bit. Dang. <laughs> what, can, what is one percent you like to hear from a coworker? Compliment. Oh. <laughs> Compliment you like to hear from a coworker or a supervisor. You're doing a good job. Exactly. Perfect. Pass it on. Well, then pick another one up. Rotate it. <laughs> no, not at all. Oh, nice. All right, what, we'll do one more. compliment you'd like to hear from a coworker or supervisor. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, okay. Um what is your favorite snack? Uh M Ms. Good choice. Awesome. So that's just kind of a fun little exercise to get do ice breaking. Okay, we'll jump right into our vision statement. This acronym is called SHARE, and it's broken down to service, honesty, attitude, respect, and ethics. Can someone tell me what good service, an example of good service is? Exactly. We act as a host or a hostess in our own home. We respond promptly to call lights, work with safety in mind. We're the first to greet others in the hallway with a warm smile. We introduce ourselves, we show others around, and so on. Uh, honesty, we build trust through open and honest communication. We're always honest about our personal strengths, but then also our limitations. We're reliable, show up to work. We take responsibility for finding the answer. Attitude, this is the way we feel and we act. And we think as well. Celebrate our accomplishments by not only just for ourselves, but also our team. We take pride in our team, smile often, respond with, with flexibility. We restate challenges as positives. Respect, treating others as we would want to be treated. If you see it, clean it. Meaning if there's a wadded up tissue or a piece of trash in the hallway, it's not just housekeeping that can pick it up. Anyone in this room can pick it up. Um, do what you say and say what you will do. Also knock on residents door before entering their room and pause before you enter their room. This is their home, so you don't have a right to just barge into their room. Um, exercise good listening skills and on stage etiquette. And what I mean by this is let's say if you're in the dining room, it's not appropriate to be in the dining room talking about what you did last weekend or deciding if you're gonna pick up a shift because it depends on what bonus you're gonna get or if you're gonna get a bonus or um, so on and so forth. You're there for the resident and you're sitting in their dining room. Essentially, you're sitting at their kitchen table. And so re be respectful of being in their space and really take that time to connect one-on-one -on -one with, one -on -one with them. Um, ethics, doing the right thing even when nobody is watching. 
refraining from gossiping, spreading rumors, always document accurately and timely, dispose of hazardous waste appropriately, don't accept gifts, and also speak positive of one another. And I kind of use this as an example um, as far as doing the right thing when nobody is watching. Uh, we had, last year actually, this is real life, we had a station, a clean utility, that had a cupboard door that was just kind of getting loose over time. Um, there's probably a huge sample, handful of staff members that would open that each shift. And it just kind of kept getting more and more loose. Well, people just kept assuming that somebody had already reported it to maintenance, when in fact it never was reported to maintenance. And next thing you know, the door falls off the hinge and pops somebody in the lift and they have to go in and get stitches. So that right there could have been prevented so easily if somebody would have done the right thing and, and uh, turned that work slip in. So today we're gonna walk through also our new hire process because every staff member as they join our team goes through this process. And a lot of it, you don't even see that person until they get into orientation either in the classroom or on the floor. So all this happens before they hit the floor. So of course we have our advertisements out in the community and uh, that's when they go ahead and apply. They may apply on our website, they may come in and apply, um, they may apply on indeed.com for instance, but that's how we get their application in. Um, then we set up a pre-interview phone screen. So that's when we call them. We walk through what they're expecting from a, from a company, but we also use this opportunity to see if they're gonna fit kind of what mold we have decided. And making sure, you know, can they work our requirements? Can they work every other weekend or every third weekend depending on their rotation? Maybe they're expecting that they can only work Monday through Friday from eight to five, nine to five, which isn't feasible in an organization like this. So we're not gonna waste their time and we're not gonna waste our time interviewing them. So that's why we do pre pre-screening with them. Then they come in for their interview if they pass that portion, um, no matter what the position is. So if you're CNAs, you're gonna run through the same interview <laughs> questions as all, of, all other CNAs. If you're a dietary aide, those questions are consistent uh, between all dietary aides. Same thing with nurses. Every position that we interview for, we ask them the same questions uh, if it's the same position that we're interviewing for. At that time, um, we can do a job offer if we wish and also an acceptance. Then they start filling out the pre-employment screening paperwork. Uh, they go through all of the new hire screening as far as background checks, um, pre-employment health screens, and all of that good stuff before they even come in. Then we jump into orientation in the classroom. And actually over the past year, we have shortened that classroom time. Day one, the first half of day one, all staff are in that, no matter what position they're in. And that's when we run through um, different policies and procedures that everyone would need to know, um, such as abuse and neglect, HIPAA, some of our emergency policies and procedures, just to kind of set that foundation of what they can expect and what they need to know when they're working here. The second half of that day, so if they're in dietary, what have you, they'll go off to their department and get started on their orientation. Uh, CNAs, they come back for that second half, half of the first day and run, run through the basics of what a CNA would need to know. Now, we really decided to not push too much on the classroom portion because I can tell you if somebody sat me in a classroom and said, explained and said, this is how you use our lift, I would not even remember it. I'm a hands-on person. So you can run through me, you can run it through with me, but I'm a hands-on person. So we have put a lot of our time more in the on the floor orientation portion. Nurses come back and they do day two, and that's when we dive into nurse, LP, and RN specific training. Orientation on the floor. So since orientation in the classroom is shortened, we actually have lengthened the orientation on the floor and it's a lot more flexible. If we have a senior that's brand new, has never worked in healthcare, um, has not ever learned how to use a lift because they don't do that in clinicals, um, they may need more time. They may need you know more than four or five days. But if a CNA has been a CNA for 30 years, let's just say, they may not need that amount of time. So we can shorten it for them and make it more flexible to their needs. We also shortened our 90-day introductory period to a 60-day introductory period. That way it's consistent with our benefit period as well. We did implement a mentoring program. Uh, this year we started out with just CNAs. We're extremely excited about it. It's been going well so far. But our hope is to have this be kind of that touch point person. So we have new hires that come in and that mentor takes the new person under their wing and not necessarily trains them during their whole orientation, 
but they're that touch point that says, hey, how did today go? Do you have any questions? I'm here for you. You know, they can kind of be that liaison person and answer those questions. Some of the, what I call behind the scene things that we do as a leadership team, we have our annual strategic, strategic plan that we meet every January. We come together, um, all the different departments, and we sit down and we talk about, okay, where are we now with this process and where do we want to go? And not only that, but then how are we gonna get there and who's responsible for, get, for getting us there? So we drill all that down, we create this packet and we hold each other accountable to this. But I will tell you this, um, every year, the main, the top focus on it is learning and the growth of our team, which is all of us in this room. This year, our goal was working on staff retention improvement. And what that breakdown looks like is reducing the 90-day turnover from quarter over quarter. Um, we also look at advertising and our student pool strategies. We have a ton of clinical students that come in here. You know, are we making the best of their time and the best of our time? Can we hire any of those CNAs that come in for clinicals? I know we have a lot of CNAs that join our team because they came here for clinicals. Um, advertising, are we even advertising in the right places? Do we need to change it up? Uh, we implemented a better interviewing and hiring process. We restructured our orientation and onboarding process. We focused a little more on communication and feedback and really tried to improve our attendance and our whole turnover process. Um, just because I'm being really transparent with the strategic plan, I'm going to let you know that other areas that we are working on is um, improved clothing processes for residents, improved processes for customer satisfaction, specifically with food service delivery, of course, regulatory compliance, response to problems, and communication, as well as the follow through to grievances, improved overall customer satisfaction as well as our improvement of would you recommend us as a satisfaction score. And then last but not least, our financial performance. So those are just some key areas that we're working on. Um, it's really easy to just put this, this packet in a folder and never look at it again. So to hold each other accountable, we have teams that meet on a routine, routine basis, but we all, the whole big group comes together quarterly to really lay out of, you know, what have we ticked off our list? What else do we have to do? And does it make sense to keep moving forward with something that we started in January and, and isn't really applicable to us anymore? Um, we have weekly or bi-weekly orientation, so you'll see new faces joining our team all of the time. Monthly retention, this is where we select our nominees for Employee of the Month, Make a Difference, and Leader of the Quarter. We also look at all of the new hires that we made that month and all of the terminations that we had that month, and we'll kind of see what that looks like here in a moment. And we also plan our fun monthly events, like the ice cream truck that comes, um, the coffee guy. This is where we plan our pumpkin painting contest and all of our competitions. So that is where that magic happens. And anyone can come to that meeting. It's the last Friday of the month at one o'clock. So if you would like to join that, just let me know. Um, we have monthly quality assurance where we focus on a portion of um, HR and our team members. And we'll also get to see a glimpse of that in a minute. And then employee surveys. So you may receive a survey um, through OnShift on your uh, OnShift messages. And feel free to click on that link. It'll just ask you a few questions. And it is anonymous, but it really helps us get feedback of your ideas and your, and your suggestions that you may have. Okay, so this is our 90-day retention. This is looking at a 90-day snapshot. And this is, our goal is to have, we saw a huge issue of the turnover within the first 90 days. So that's really where we really put our focus in on. And okay, so retention, you want that number to be higher. So we're looking at a snapshot of those 90 days, all of the staff that we hired in 90 days, did they make it another 90 days? So if we hired staff, did they make it at, you know three months? So <coughs> first quarter of our hires, um, we retained 67.5 of those staff members. Second quarter, we dropped down a bit and we are at 66.5, but this third quarter, we jumped up to 69.5. So we did make a little bit of ground. We kind of are ebbing and flowing, but so we retained over 50% of our staff. So that's, you know, not horrible, but looking at our turnover rate. So turnover rate, you want that to be lower. So retention, you want to be higher. Turnover, you want to be lower. Turnover is 
all of our staff members across all departments, no matter when they were hired, you take that number and how many of those staff have you lost within a year, you know, within in that year that you're looking at. Currently, right now, annualized out, we're at 67%. So we have turned over this year so far 60% of our staff population. Now that does seem high, but this is actually average in healthcare and especially in Lincoln with us being in a college town. So I did include on there looking back 2014, we actually turned over 77% of our staff. 2015, we jumped all the way up to 89%. 2016, we were at 73%, and then last year we ended at 79%. So we are sitting much better now than we were last year. So can you guys tell me um, an example of what teamwork means to you as you're working on the floor? for the residents, of course. And if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this in-service is realizing that not one person or one department is better than the other or um, is providing the resident care more than the other. Because if you take out one department, what happens? If you take out housekeeping, we don't have housekeeping. Um, so, you know, the room isn't clean. Somebody gets sick and then potentially can pass away or uh, become weak because they had to go to the doctor and now they're sick and they can't come out of their room to go out to activities their whole quality of life declines um, you have a CNA that just assumes because they see a sore on someone's back that the day shift told the nurse so then the evening shift comes on and evening shift assumes that the shift before then told the nurse and then nobody tells the nurse that there's this pressure sore occurring then what happens then the resident really could get sick. So just thinking of that aspect that not one person or department um, can be removed and not be successful. Another important thing for teamwork is showing up for your team and showing up for your residents. This is actually taken directly from our strategic, directly from our QA. This data is specifically looking at um, September of this year. So when we meet for QA, we look at the previous month. So when we meet in November, we will review October, and we haven't had that meeting yet. So this is September's data. We look specifically at nursing and dietary attendance because those are our largest departments. As you can see, nursing is the very bottom there. We had 69 day shift, 71 evening shift, 31 night shift call-ins. That's all nursing, LPN, RN, CNA, and med aid. Dietary, we had 11 day shift, two evening shift. So if we look at nursing specifically, that was 172 call-ins just for September. This does not include the open shifts that we have that we have to hire for. This does not include uh, pre-planned time off. This is just simply call-ins that somebody called in for their shift and didn't come in to fulfill their shift. So I'm not saying that if you're sick, I expect you to come into work because we work with residents that if you do come in and you're sick, obviously that is detrimental to them. But what I'm saying is I don't want you to come in and your shift has started, you're on the floor for a little bit, and you know you felt crummy before you came in, and then you come to staffing and say, oh, do you see how sick I am? I, I can't work, I have to go home. Because now we're behind the eight ball and getting your shift filled, and most likely we're not gonna get your shift filled. I'm just saying that you have an obligation as an employee here to, employee here to fulfill your shift, to take care of the residents, and to be a good team member, and that is an expectation. So that number is extremely high. 172. Um, looking at September's new hire and termination numbers, um, we welcomed 13 new team members um, as a new hire, and that's all departments. And we look at the previous month, but we also look at the previous year. Did we change something from 
August to September as far as where we, where we are recruiting. Do we need to change something back again? Are we tracking and trending with the previous year? Does it make sense? So obviously you can see we were a little bit lower in September. So when we have our meetings, we drill down and see what did we change and what can we change back again. Um, terminations, we lost 22 um, team members. So you can see that we were essentially in the negative. You know, we hired 13 and we lost 22. Um, we compare that to August where we lost 16 and then also last year in September when we lost 19. So we are looking at those numbers and really trying to root cause to see what those fluctuations are. Customer satisfaction survey. So really the reason that I put this in there is because communication in itself has always been on our strategic plan because we have in the past been scoring very, very low on communication. And so we did implement that in our strategic plan and we've been working really hard to get that number up. And now this month, when we got this customer satisfaction survey back, communication was like the highest. So it's super exciting. And that is everyone in this room that has made that difference. So these um, satisfaction surveys are not only taken by um, residents, but also their family members as well. So kudos to everyone. Uh, the other higher scoring areas is nursing care and response to problems. Uh, our lowest scoring areas are quality of food and also laundry service and dining service. So we do have active process improvement plans, you know, working in those areas. So of course, if you have suggestions, you know, you can go ahead and share them. Um, now we're going to brainstorm and just kind of think out loud. Think about your past experiences when you were joining a team or joining a new job. And what are some things that you remember? that made you think, yes, that is where I want to be. I'm so excited I joined that team and it's a rock star team. What are some things that happened or that made you wanna go back? Gotta do something. <laughs> Somebody introduced themselves, they smiled, they showed you around, right? Okay. Some bad experiences, you know, people just ignored you. You were standing there, they didn't even say hi, you didn't know where the restroom was, you didn't know where supplies were, and yet you're supposed to take care of people, you're supposed to make their food. You know, what I say as I break this down, you just, you yourself, you need to be that person that you want to work with every single day. Nobody wants to come in and walk down the hallway and people are all just like looking down, you know, in their own little world, or you show up to your station on your shift for your first day, and you're sitting there and you're like, okay, am I even at the right station? Who am I supposed to be with? And everyone's just acting like you're not even there. So I'm gonna tell you this circumstance because this really did happen in the past few weeks. Um, we had an orientee and she, we met up with her, you know, after her first couple of shifts and we said, how did today, you know, how has your orientation gone? And she's like, you know, it was okay, but I stood at, I stood at the desk for 15 minutes before anybody even said hi to me. And so we went to the team and we said, guys, you had this new orientee join your team and you acted like she wasn't even there and you need to be, you know, telling her who she's with because we write it down and all that good stuff, showing her around. That's what she's there for. That's what you're there for. She's your new team member. And then we got the excuse, well, I didn't even know that she was new. So we pumped the brakes. We've been adding in um, new little tags that staff members can put on the back of their tag that hangs on and says exceptional new team member. They don't have to put it on, but they can. But then also I come back with that and say, if you see somebody that you've never seen before, why not introduce yourself? What's it gonna hurt, you know? Um, they may have worked full time night shift and now they finally got a day shift because they can. And they're new to your team, really. They're new to your day shift. So it's not gonna hurt anything. Say hi, introduce yourself. Um, you know, it may have been there they've been working there for a while and you've been off and you switched to a different um, station. So just introduce yourself. If you don't, if you don't recognize them, introduce yourself because it's a new face. I just think this cartoon is funny. It says, think about your first day. And at the bottom it says, no, she's not having a seizure. She always has a panic attack before her shift. She'll be fine. So just kind of reflect back to your first day and how nervous you were and just put yourself in that new employee's shoes. Okay. Now take a look around the room. We each bring different and very valuable experiences to the table. Think about, like I said, if we didn't have dietary or if we didn't have housekeeping, how that would affect your job and resident care. And how can you help each other out to reach that uh, 
common goal of resident centered care. Okay, so I just need two volunteers and those two volunteers, they have to work together frequently to have kind of a scenario, scenario or, st or story to share. Can't talk. So two people that work together. You don't have to stand up or anything. It's super simple. I'll volunteer. Okay. Is there somebody in here that you work with frequently? Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I like. So just if one of you, are you going to pick the person next to you? Sure. Awesome. So one of you just say. I'm going to pick a, a quiet person. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Donetta, okay. say, and I know you're positive, so you'll have to pump the brakes on this one too. Okay. Say something like that has happened that was an ideal was not in an ideal situation like something negative happened and it kind of put everybody you know on the they were slower at getting something done or slowed everyone down and it wasn't a positive situation okay someone worked on our station left the station while the residents were eating and hadn't been out of the dining room yet and they chose to leave and go on a break okay okay so now, whoever you chose as your partner, bam, okay, you need to flip that around into like a positive learning moment. Um, I'm off and they come back. <laughs> no, just when they come back, tell them that that wasn't a good time and to take their break and to continue helping people in the dining room and just kind of just let them know and then brush it off your shoulder and just yeah. keep going on. Yeah, just so let them know that that probably wasn't the appropriate time. Maybe, you know, they're newer or they don't know you're reaching on your station. There's always something positive. You know, in every moment, there's always something to learn for, from no matter what. So I ask you to think about your speak as well. Um, for an example, if you got flooded to a station because 172 call-ins in September, you did get flooded to a different station, if you got there, you don't work there frequently, or it's been a couple of months since you've been there, and you're kind of frazzled. Obviously, stuff has changed since you've been changed since you've been there. Call it goes off, you go in there, and Bill's like, "Get me, get me my walker." Let's just say, "Get me my walker," and you're like, instead of jumping in there and saying, "Oh, I haven't been on your station. I don't even know who you are. Uh, I don't know what to do. I, I'm afloat. I'm afloat. You know what have you?" Just say, oh, okay, Bill, I will, I'm so glad I get to help you today. I will go get your care sheet so I make sure that you have, that I transfer you appropriately. So you and myself, neither one of us get hurt. And I get to take care of you today. I'll be right back. Just a way to flip around your speak. Think about the resident and being in their shoes. If you were in their shoes and somebody came into your room and seemed frazzled, um, you would feel like you're a burden. Like you were asking too much to get up and go walk and get some coffee or something. So just think about how you would feel in their shoes. Okay, we have a couple tasks before we're done. Number one, um, if you had, and somebody to speak out loud, if you had one interview question that you would like to ask on the pre-hire interview screening, and if they ask that question and they answer it appropriately, you'd be like, yes, I want them on my team. And I'll give you some examples. Yesterday, somebody said, they wanted to add, if you could be any animal, what would you be? And they said, if somebody answers sloth, I don't want them on my team. Um, number two, somebody asked if um, they want to know what motivates people. Um, why do you want to work here? Are you used to working in a large group? Do you have experience in customer service? Do you have reliable transportation? Are you willing to trade shifts for coverage? So what other questions would you guys like to add to our interview question list? What do you know about Lane Foster? Okay. Good. What else? I'm writing these down. <coughs> Any other ones? Okay. And my question to you, why would someone even want to work here? And yesterday's group said popcorn, that popcorn's amazing. Um, we have great friendships, this is a rewarding place to work, and it's a fun group of employees. So I'm asking you, why would someone want to work here? Get to help people. Okay. <coughs> Any other ones? My other 
other question to you is, or I'm going to ask you or tell you, um, I would like you to, there are forms on this table over here, there's Make a Difference forms and there are Employee of the Month nomination forms. Um, there is also blank cards. So I ask that you grab one of one of those, depending on what you want. You can nominate somebody or you can write a thank you card. Um, but I ask you to fill out a nomination if you've had somebody, because sometimes, and I'm even guilty, I will think, okay, I need to nominate them. I'll grab it later. Then I get home and I'm like, oh, dang it. I should have grabbed that and filled it out. I'll do it tomorrow, what have you. So now's your time. If you have somebody that you've been wanting to nominate, do it now. If you don't, if you can't think of anybody, there has to be somebody that you worked with that you appreciate something that they did. So grab a blank card and just write them a quick note. They'll appreciate it. You turn that card directly into them, but if you have a nomination, turn it into me. And I just want that done before the end of this week. And then two more things. Number one, if you see somebody new after you leave here today, when you're on the floor, I ask you to, to simply introduce yourself. And then last but not least, don't remain stagnant. And that means two things to me. Number one, we have so much room for growth here. If you are in dietary and you want to become a CNA, we can help you get there. If you're a nurse and you want to get additional certifications, or if you're a CNA and you want to get additional certifications, we can help you. If we don't have the opportunity here to help you get there, we can help you find those opportunities in the community. And Denise would be so happy and thrilled to help you do that. So see her if you want to do that. And Denise, also- What do they get if they are Make a Difference recipient and Employee of the Month? Make a Difference recipients, they get a little write-up in our, in our um, newsletter. But they also get a $25 Visa gift card. And make it or employee of the month winners, they get a $50 bonus on their paycheck. And they also get a little write up in our newsletter. And they also get a month of that free parking spot up front. Is that a good question? And then last but not least, what I mean with don't remain stagnant is there's always something to do here. I don't care if your to do list for your shift is done. I don't want to see people sitting at the nurses' stations. There's a resident sitting in their room that has no family to come visit them go talk to them or help your coworkers out and get ready for the next shift. Um, if you work ahead a little bit and everybody does a little bit for everyone, it will make the environment so much better. So that is all I have. You are free to go. Don't forget to grab your uh, nomination or card and don't forget to sign in if you forgot to. <laughs>